Hey folks, welcome to another Inkwell Ideas video. I'm Joe Wetzel, the owner of the company, and this time we're not talking about Worldographer like we usually do. Usually we're doing how-tos on that and some other showing off special features and so forth. But this time we've got these cool icons, cool map tiles to show off in a free, free web application that we've created that we're calling Hexlands. This is all in support of a crowdfunding that we're doing right now that we're about halfway through with. That is for exploration decks and tiles. The decks are cards with really vibrant, interesting, fun ideas about the artwork on the other side of most of the cards. For example, you'll pull a card and you might get a tower with these weird floating crystals in the backside. We'll give you what those floating crystals might be all about or some other unusual factors about that tower. Not just the standard, what's the age of a tower? What's it made of? We'll probably have some cards about that as well, but really trying to lean into some unique things. For another example would be there might be a strange cavern that's shaped like the maw of a creature, the giant mouth of a creature, and give you ideas of what that is. Was it a petrified stone giant, for example, that then was carved out to be in a portal to another world? St stuff like that. And these cards are written by Andrew Shields. I think of myself as having a fairly good imagination, but when I look at what he comes up with, I'm really happy with the breadth and the depth of the ideas that he puts on these cards. Pretty much any point can be the story hook for a new adventure. So when you're creating a, a fantasy campaign, you can create a map with the tiles and you can lay in these feature icons. And that is one aspect of the project, which you'll get a digital version of these files, as well as though printed, you opt for the pre printed versions, you'll get three inch hex tiles where each three inch hex is a three, three hex across tile. And right now, thanks to stretch goals, originally we we're going to have 64 of those tiles, double-sided. And now that we hit a stretch goal for 72, and we've even hit a stretch goal to have 80 of them. And you can get these uh, little feature icons as well as probably, depending on stretch goals, but probably these uh, coasts and these rivers and lakes and so forth, as well as uh, static clings that go on the tiles. So that's the other half of the project. One half is the cards, giving you ideas about the different locations that you might want to start out on your starting campaign map. And then the other side of the project are these tiles, which in the free web app we're using, but like I said, final version will be at least 80 tiles, double-sided. So there's going to be, some of the backs are going to be blank, but most of them are going to have additional designs. So you're going to have at least 120 different images on 80 tiles. And then if we had a stretch goal to go further for that, then we can add in some more. So with the sponsored part of the, the uh, let's, let's dive into the how to add aspect of their, these tiles are being done by Dyson Logos. We've worked with for quite a while. He innovated the design of what we call our dungeon morphs, but he was starting to do these little dungeon geomorphs that were a 10 by 10 kind of grid back in 2010 or so, I believe is when he started it. And I saw that and said to him, hey, we should put these on dice because on a fat, chunky one inch die, you can see enough detail to, to do a 10 by 10 design on, onto that die. And so that became our Dungeon Morph Dice, and we've moved on to include that on, on cards and, and books of ideas that go with those as well. The point being, we've been working with Dyson for a while. The cartography behind these comes from a number of uh, maps, a series called Autumn Lands and a Midsummer Lands before that. And I reached out to him and said, hey, it'd be cool to cut these out and, and put them onto tiles. And he said, yeah, I'd love to be involved. And he has made a couple of uh, special versions of those maps for us to more easily pull them apart and make them available to you as tiles, whether in this tool or um, through for our crowdfunding project like it was originally planned. So back to the how-to of this. In version point one, all you could do is generate the map here and then you could pick a special feature like this castle tower here. Here's another kind of wizard's tower. Here's more of a town that's inside of a wall and you can put these different icons down. We've got a bunch of them in this free tool and we'll be adding more too. You can pick these and stick them wherever you want on your map. Uh, so that was version 0.1. Then version 0.15 would let you pick them and move them around. So you can 
do this, and then you can also trash them. So if you didn't want something on your map after all, you can click on it and delete it. Uh, also in version 0.15, you uh, had the option to put on these um, coastlines. So we can grab this, and, and some of them span one side of that three hex region, if you will, and some span two sides. And we might add in some more variety too, e even beyond what you're seeing so far here. But we can do the, oh, sorry, I clicked on the wrong thing. Let's put it here. And, and, and you already saw that we had added the delete in the 0.15 version, so I can delete this. However, there is an important note that for coastlines, you've got to click near the center of an image to select it or to delete it. But for coastlines, they're set up to span the entire hexagon. So the center of this is actually right around here. Point being that you're, and it's that overall three hex region that it spans is what you've got to think of for finding where is the center of that particular coastline. And, and that allows us to do things like say, I have the, I want to use this particular uh, coastline because I like that shape better than the other one that is typically for this top of a hex kind of coast. So I can stick that there. Now in version 0.2, that, that, that's just out now, I can go ahead and, and select this. And again, I do have to select right around here to get the uh, central point. And so we're doing a little bit of a highlighting for you as well here so that you know that something is selected and which thing is selected. And here I can now do a rotation as well. So I can stick this thing up, rot rotate it by 180 degrees, turn off the selection there, and you can see that I can stick that up there. So I just have some more variety. So even though you've only got one coast per side of a hex, if I want to rotate that as well by 60 degrees per side, then that gives me even more variety. I am going to do the whole top of the coastline. I guess I just sometimes get into decorating mode where I want to finish the whole thing. <laughs> and so that's what we've done now. So, the, so that's our, that's our prettier coastline. And again, these, these are, these coastlines also come from the different maps that Dyson has made. Oh, I didn't do up here, but we'll, we'll, we'll stop there with the coastline uh, in the sake of time. So then the other new thing in version 0.2 is doing rivers in, in the same way where it's a river construction kit. We've got one fork for the river, and then we've got two different lakes that it might flow to, and then we've got a couple of different mouths for the beginning of the, or for the end of the river. And then we've got a couple of origin icons that you can use to, to get it started. And then we've got several river lengths, if you will, or the main channels. So I'm going to pick one of these openings to the river and I can drop this down, say, say I want to stick it over here. And then I've got to rotate that. So I got to go and click this and then click the rotate and figure out where is the best, yeah, right about like that. Then I'll go and click move and I can move this icon a little bit further up that way. Maybe I want to select it again and rotate it a little bit more just to make it a bit more seamlessly match there. That looks pretty good. And then I can pick one of these river sections, like we said, scroll back up, go here, pick on this. Now, maybe I'll select this first and move this guy here. Oh, no, I just need to do this to move it. So maybe I want to move this guy out of the way, at least for now. He might be on the river, but probably not in his case, since it's an evil temple and we want him to be somewhat out of the way, but I can hit the select button, select it, and then rotate this and see what is the best rotation for that. And that's about, that's pretty good there. Then I can go down here and hit the fork when, and throw this fork in here and then rotate this as well. Select it and rotate this as I'd like, and then move it back up into place something like that. I'm not getting quite so exact because obviously we've got only so much time here for the video, but then I can pick one of these other links here and stick this on and select this one and rotate it a little bit one way or the other and then drag it around. Oop, 
yeah, drag it around to f connect these two together. And then finally grab uh, one of those origin points here, for example, this one here, and then select this guy and then rotate this. And that's almost right. Maybe I'll just move it ever so slightly get it right there. So there you go. That's your starting campaign area. I, I'd probably throw in a few more of these icons throughout just to give us some more variety, more locations to explore. That's point two, version point two of the tool. It's only eight days old. And my knowledge of this particular uh, JavaScript framework that we're working with is also about eight days. So expect some bugginess, but we'll get things ironed out as we put out, put out updates. And obviously as my knowledge and familiarity with the, the tool improve, but I hope that this is fun and useful. It, it's cool. You can see what we're planning on doing next in future updates and I'd encourage you to check it out. Obviously, please do check out the crowdfunding project. We'll have links to a direct link to, the, to this tool, which is inkwellideas.com slash roleplaying underscore tools slash hex lands, but also to the crowdfunding project, Hexploration Decks and Tiles, where you can check all that out. There's a free full-size sample card deck, as well as that zip file of a bunch of these images that you can download and check out, as well as two scenarios that our writer Andrew Shields has written showing how these tiles and icons and the cards, particularly the cards, can be used to create your starting campaign area. So I hope you find all that useful. Thanks for considering it. Thanks for giving it a look. 